Okay, so today we're going to be looking at simple trigonometric identities, two of them in fact. And firstly, we're going to see why they're true. We're going to do a quick derivation. And then we're going to look at some examples of using them to simplify expressions, just to kind of uh, understand how to use them. So to see why these identities I'm going to show you are true, it all starts off with the unit circle. So we're going to look at a circle around the origin, and it has radius 1, so this length is 1. And then we just consider any point on the circle, which I've called x, y. And now what we do is we drop down this vertical line, and we form a right angle triangle. So this is 90 degrees. And then we know that since this point is x, y, we know that this uh, horizontal distance from here to here is x, and the vertical height is y. So let me just sketch out that triangle again, just to make it a little bit clearer. This is a triangle, this is 90 degrees, the right angle triangle. This is 1, this is x, and this is y. And then to think in terms of trigonometry, we need an angle as well. So I'm just going to call this angle theta. And then we're going to be looking at applying sine, cosine, and tan of this angle. And we can actually express it from its definitions in terms of the ratio of these lengths. So let me just do that. We can actually find a formula for sine of theta. And remember, this is the opposite divided by, I'll just write it here, the opposite divided by the hypotenuse. So if this is theta, the opposite length is this one, which is y. So it's y divided by the hypotenuse. But the hypotenuse here is just 1. So in fact, sine of theta for this circle is equal to y. Then cosine of theta, we have a similar definition. It's the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse side. And in this triangle, the adjacent side is x, and the hypotenuse is 1. So it's again, it's x divided by 1, which is just x. And then for tan of theta, uh, similar definition, it's the opposite side divided by the adjacent side. And then for this triangle, the opposite side, as we said, was y. The adjacent side was x. So this is actually y divided by x. And now if we just look at tan of theta, this is actually going to give us the first identity. So we've got a formula for tan of theta in terms of y and x, but we've also expressed y and x in terms of sine and cosine of theta. So y was sine of theta and uh, x was cosine of theta. So this immediately tells us that tan of theta, this is the same thing as writing sine of theta divided by cosine of theta. So this is our first identity. And we call it an identity because it's true for all angles theta. It doesn't just have one solution, this is actually always true, no matter what angle theta we choose. So I'll just uh, put this in a box because it's really important. Now a second identity is going to come from using Pythagoras' theorem on this triangle. So if we apply Pythagoras' to this, then we have x squared plus y squared equals 1 squared, which is just 1. And we can do this because this is a right angle triangle. And just as before, we have formulas for x and y in terms of sine and cosine. So if we just plug those in, this gives us cosine squared of theta plus sine squared of theta equals 1. And again, this is an identity because it's true for all angles theta. So this is our second identity that we're looking at. So now that we've derived these, we're going to look at some examples using them to simplify expressions. So I'm just going to wipe off the board and then we'll look at that. OK, so for our first example, we're going to be looking at the expression 5 minus 5 sine squared of theta. And to simplify this, I'm going to first, uh, we've got two terms of 5, so I'm just going to first factorize out the 5. So 5 times 1 minus sine squared of theta. And now we see the sine squared term, and this can give you a hint at which two of these uh, identities we're going to use. We're actually going to use this one. And the way we're going to use it is just by rearranging this equation. So we see we have sine squared of theta plus cosine of squared of theta equals 1. But if you just subtract off sine squared of theta from both sides, we actually get that this, 1 minus sine squared of theta, is equal to exactly cosine squared of theta. So this gives us the first simplification. So this, let me just recap, comes exactly from rearranging this equation. So you can find a formula for 1 minus sine squared of theta, and this is exactly cosine squared of theta. So let's do another one. This is going to be a bit trickier now. We're going to look at sine 2 of theta, so 2 times this angle theta divided by the square root of 1 minus sine squared of 2 theta. The square root applies to all of this. And to start off, we're going to look at the denominator. So remember we said that 1 minus sine squared of an angle is equal to cosine squared of that angle. So 
the angle doesn't actually matter because it's always true for any angles as long as we use the same angle. So we're going to apply this identity with the angle 2 theta. So this becomes the square root of cosine squared of 2 lots of theta. And then the square root and the square cancel and we get sine of 2 theta divided by cosine, just cosine, of 2 theta. And then this is nice because we can use our first identity that says tan is just the ratio between sine and cosine. And again, we can apply to any angle as long as we, we're consistent with the angle. So this is actually just tan of 2 theta. Okay, so I've got one more example to talk about. This is going to be the hardest one. We're going to look at cosine to the power of 4 of x. So our angle now is x. And then this is minus sine also to the power of 4 of x. And then this is divided by cosine squared of x. Now to simplify this, we're going to use a clever factorization, which I really like. So we see we actually have a difference of two squares on the top. So I can actually write this as cosine squared of x minus sine squared of x. All of this times the same expression with a plus instead. So cosine squared of x plus sine squared of x. And then the denominator stays the same, so it's just divided by cosine squared of x. And now why that's particularly nice is because this second bracket, cosine squared of x plus sine squared of x, this is exactly our second identity, and it tells us that this bracket is equal to 1. So we can just get rid of it, essentially, and this simplifies to cosine squared of x minus sine squared of x, all divided by cosine squared of x. And now we can simplify by splitting up this fraction into two fractions. So I'm just going to write it as cosine squared of x divided by cosine squared of x. That's just from the first term. And then minus the second term. And I'm going to write it slightly differently. Cosine sine of x over cosine of x. And then all of this to the power of 2. So I've just factored out power of 2. But this is the same as sine squared of x divided by cosine squared of x. And then you can see how this is going to simplify. So these two terms cancel. We get a 1. And minus, we said the sine over cosine was just tan. So this is tan of x. But we've still got the squared term, so this is 1 minus tan squared of x. So we just showed that this really messy expression is actually just the same as 1 minus tan squared of x, which is really nice. So I hope that helped you give you some intuition about why these identities are true and how to use them. There are so many different ways, so many different problems that you can use um, to simplify expressions, and they always seem to come up. So these are two identities that are really good to know.